All right, you guys, back here with another video today. And today we're using this <laughs> Oh, what the f All right, you guys, back here with another video today. And today we're talking about diffusion as it relates to creating soft sources of light to ultimately achieve that cinematic look that we're all striving for. You wanna use soft light sources on your subjects in particular because it creates a visually appealing and an overall more flattering image of your talent. Now, this is not to say you can't achieve this cinematic look without soft light. You know, intentionality, directionality, an overall understanding of how that shape of light is helping or hindering to your storytelling are overall components that define something as being cinematic. Now, Diffusion does a great job of this because it takes the light that you have and it creates a larger source of light in relation to the subject, which is the definition of soft light. In addition to this definition, we also want to add that a light source can be small, but the closer you bring it in relation to the subject, the softer it will be. Now, when I'm filming all these talking head videos for YouTube, for example, or interviews, or anything where the subject is predominantly looking directly into the camera, I'm more often than not going to be using soft light. Typically, you're going to find most experienced videographers and cinematographers doing the same thing because of the old disclosed rule of you want to use soft light to light faces and hard light to light spaces. Now, it's not to say you can't use hard light, and we do have to discuss hard light because there are generally more widely, commonly, more sources of hard light available than not. So hard light are sources that are small in relation to the subject or sources that can be big in relation to the subject, but they're much further away. Now, the most practical example I can give you for this is the sun. The sun is hundreds of thousands of miles wide in diameter, so that thing is thing, that thing is huge, right? It's the biggest thing known to man, it's the brightest thing known to man. But because of the fact that it's 100 million miles away approximately, it's very small in relation to us. We know this to be true because if you go outside on any given Sunday, no pun intended, and look up at the sky, you can see that the sun is bigger than that of a quarter. And if you put your hand up next to the sun, you'll recognize that your hand is much bigger than the sun in relation to what your eyes can see because it's closer to your eye, right? And this is basically what you have to think about when you're going to um, think about using light sources and figuring out how big or small the source of light is. So now that we understand soft light, hard light, let's throw some practical examples in there. So if we go into practice example number one, the sun, if you go outside with another person and you look and see how the sun hits that subject, you'll see that you'll have a large concentrated spread of light somewhere on someone's head, face, neck, etc. And it's just gonna be very distracting and very unflattering. Additionally, you'll notice that the shadows under the eyes, the neck area, under the chin, and your overall shadow on the ground are gonna be very pronounced, hard, and sharp because they're very contrasted. And when you go to take pictures and do video, you'll see that it's not the best flattering looking image. You're not gonna more often than not like what comes out of the camera. You're gonna think that something's wrong, but really that's just your subconscious letting you know that you don't like the picture because of the quality of the light that's being shaped, hard light. So conversely, we can use the other side of the spectrum, soft light, to be able to get better quality footage. So to introduce soft light into this example, we can either A, add a diffusion panel in to soften the light and have a more even spread of light, or B, just wait several days for the clouds to come up. Now you might be wondering why we're waiting for clouds to come up, but the clouds are essentially natural diffusers. They're free diffusion panels that are available for us because the light waves still shine down on the earth as they always have, but now they have that added layer of processing through those clouds before ultimately lighting the sky, lighting the trees, the water, humans, animals, etc. And because we have this free diffusion panel, we now take away that directionality that that harsh light has given us. We now have a more even spread of coverage, more flattering coverage. And if you now go out and look at somebody on a cloudy day, you'll recognize that, okay, I can actually see this person a lot clearer. The even spread of coverage is a lot better than what it was on a sunny day. You don't see a harsh stream of light just beaming in on somebody, just distracting you from looking at them or distracting from a picture or video if you take something of them. And if you look down, your shadows aren't gonna be as pronounced and as well defined as they previously were because of the fact that the coverage is so soft. So if we go into two other examples here that we have inside the condo, we use an artificial light, we have the one to the left, which is what you've been seeing, which is essentially just one artificial light using a diffuser to soft the light, and the right side is using the same exact light source but removing the diffuser, thus creating hard light. You know, the left side essentially just lets you know that you have overall even coverage. The gradation is very nice between light and dark. When you see the light on my face as opposed to the shadows on my neck, it's a very smooth roll off. It's not a very sharp, hard distinction between those two. 
and you just overall just have a very pleasing and flattering look versus the right side of the spectrum where you can see that you have a very harsh spill of light on the right side of my face. You see uneven coverage of the light throughout the image. The shadows, the gradation between my neck and going up to my face is a lot sharper. And overall, the image just, it's just not looking as professional and clean and as and neat as we did with the original image. So soft light pretty much wins out here. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments about soft versus hard light questions, comments, just anything about this topic. I'd be interested to know what you guys think. You know, we're slowly on our way to 100 subscribers, and I didn't think we'd be going this slow in this journey, being almost 80 videos in, but YouTube has a funny way of humbling us with this YouTube algorithm that they have, so shout out that algorithm. But, you know, thank you to all the community I have built thus far. I really appreciate it. I'm really appreciative. I'm here for you guys just as much as you're here for me, so don't take that for granted. Um, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. For videos like this and other ones in the future, as always. And happy holidays, guys. And if I don't see you guys anytime soon, then, you know, well, you actually will see me soon. So I don't know why I said that. You'll see me next week. Anyways, till next time, guys. Peace.